0800-682-9238. You can also go to their website at www.enerfood.com. That's E-N-E-R. F like Frank, O O D like dog dot com, Enerfood dot com. A big thank you to all of our listeners already taking the products that Enner Health offers. We truly appreciate it. We thank you for your support and encourage you to listen often to stay informed during these crucial times. Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Okay, now, um, you go on down the road, and it says, And it shall be as when the harvest man gathereth the corn, and reapeth the ears with his arm, and it shall be as he that gathereth ears. In the valley of the Rephaim. Well, the valley of the Rephaim, the giants, uh, is very much in that same area up in there. And, uh, Steve, uh, was told you over the years about, uh, uh, even the, uh, uh, Russian, uh, uh, eye doctor who is next. Uh, this is the Hawk. Had a little trouble getting in, uh, but I'm in here now. It is the 27th day, I believe, of June 2013. It is a live show. It's Thursday night. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, we are, uh, <laughs> every day it just seems that there is an offensive or an attack on another area of freedoms or something that destroys what's going on in America again. Now, I'll tell you, the uh, Senate, in case you didn't know, passed a immigration bill through the Senate, uh, at least, uh, you know, 68 to 32, I believe, 14 Republicans voted with the Democrats. But the fact of the matter is, supposedly they've got this whole thing all settled now, but the border is still not secure and will not be secure. They talked, I heard somebody talk on the television today to one of the uh, uh, Texas sheriff's right on the border who has 98 miles of the border through his territory. And uh, he says uh, this thing about the 20,000 new Border Patrol agents, he said that's all baloney because now there's 60,000 on furlough about right now. They've got all a bunch of them on furlough, and so 20,000 is just another drop in the bucket, more fence, but then they can wiggle out and not have to do the fence. And then it's all dependent upon the U.S. government. Uh, the president, the Joker Tut, saying the border is secure. Well, they've been saying it's secure all along. The Palatano, uh, DHS, Department of Human Sacrifice head, uh, Jeanette, the uh, bull uh, Napolitano, she says it's safe anyway. Remember she went down there? And she did that, of course, even right after... Uh, Fast and Furious, when uh, the guns that were approved allegedly by the Joker Tud, allegedly by the Attorney General and the head of uh, uh, BATF, the Bad App, and we know them involved and probably DHS as well, that's when they uh, killed the uh, Border Patrol agent, uh, Terry, in the United States. And then she goes down right after that, says the border's secure? I don't think so. So anyway, it's just kind of interesting. And then meanwhile, there's a lot of what I would call juxtaposition. You got the Joker Tet lizard is coming out the door of no return in Senegal. It's a famous port there in Senegal where the slaves, the African slaves, which, by the way, were taken and sold into slavery by other African tribes and What's interesting with Obama there, with the Joker Tut lizard there, is that most of the slave traders on that end were, were black and Arab Muslims were trading the slaves and sending them to the America. And then what's also interesting is that people like Brown Brothers Bank, and uh, the Rothschild banks and all of the banks in London uh, and Brown Brothers, as you know, was uh, the Bush 
Bush crowd, uh, Brown Brothers Harriman, that kind of a thing. Well, they were the ones financing the Blackbird ships, the slavery, and the, and they own slave markets, etc., in the United States. So the powers that be that that elected Obama so he could then destroy the Constitution and all of this, and then now he's over there in Africa, and meanwhile back home, he's commenting on the fact that the Supreme Court has uh, made a decision to uh, call on Congress to change some of the Voter Registration Act of 1968 legislation to reflect the new issues to where there is not the level of discrimination in the southern states primarily that they focused on then that there was back then. So the fact is they've been allowing and then ensuring that every uh, district would favor uh, a black sheriff, a black mayor, whatever. A lot of the cities and a lot of the things and counties down there are run, uh, you know, I mean, by African-Americans, by black people. But at the same time, in a sense, that destroys rights, apparently, from his viewpoint of that. But meanwhile, he's ensured that homosexuals have rights in spite of what the Bible might say, okay? And they're given extraordinary rights and also uh, illegal aliens, which are predominantly Hispanic, are getting extraordinary rights and basically are getting in the Senate bill amnesty. Now, what I don't understand is why some stand by technical difficulties. Stand by. Dan, how it is that the people in the black community can still support this man, you know, and I understand he's the first black man, but he's also half white. His mother's white. So now they've got our problem. If I'm white, I'm going to say, well, welcome to the club. We've got stinking guys that are politicians, regardless of their color. You know, Martin Luther King talked about the character of the people. Not to judge by the color of the skin, but by the character of the person, you see. And in that respect, you're judging by the color of the skin. And the person there is basically destroying your employment in the inner cities, putting your people on the welfare in order to control and manage them. Sure, giving you the Obama phone you know, and all of that. But at the same time, I would like to know what's wrong with a young black man uh, having a job on a roofing crew or a young white man having a job on a roofing crew or, a, you know, a Asian uh, young man having a job on a roofing crew or an American Indian young man where you got a reservation where the unemployment might be, you know, 70, 80 percent, something like that for the young People, why they can't work on a roofing crew? Why do they all have to be Hispanic people? Well, you see, the fact is, and this is no disrespect, the Hispanic people are industrious, uh, even the illegals. But the fact is, they're, if they're illegal, or if they're here and not getting amnesty, then basically what they're going to do is they're going to be able to then get opportunities to be hired since they do not get benefits. They don't get benefits. So then it would be more advantageous for a company to hire those Hispanics than to hire a black man or woman or a, or a white man or woman, an Irish man, a, an English man, a, you know, uh, an EIEIO, Heinz 57, Norwegian, uh, left-handed Lithuanian man. Okay. Because we would get benefits, but these newly created amnesty citizens <coughs> don't get benefits for a number of years. 
You see, it's just really strange. Juxtaposition. And then you have him bragging about how he's not going to scramble jets, you know, to go after uh, Snowden. And at the same time, you've got you've got the uh, Feinstein who wants to take every gun away and violate your constitutional rights and put you into a co concentration camp under NDAA and to take away your rights. She's calling for the hunting down and the arrest of this Snowden. Well, yeah, you're in charge of the intelligence community. How about we surveil you 24 hours a day and put that report in a videotape of all your conversations that you had in the last year from the cloud and put them up on TV screens all around the country, Diane Feinstein, and just see how you shape up. The Snowden, if he is giving information to these other people, it is not that much information necessarily that they did not have before. And then Kerry, Mr. Purple Heart Kerry, because he scratched himself on the on the boat, you know, where he was on for a little while, and then put himself in for a Purple Heart because he cut his hand on the railing. Kerry then wants to hunt him down too and how this could destroy the intelligence capability. Well, let me tell you something. If there are intelligence agencies in the world, these other countries did not already know from the open source material that the NSA has been scooping up every single thing along with GH, GCHQ in Britain, along with the Aussie and the New Zealand, uh, you know, uh, NSA type facilities, communication collection facilities or that the Spanish can do it themselves, or the Russians can do it, or that the Chinese are doing it. You know, I'm going to tell you something. The Spanish have an excellent intelligence agency. Oh, Red. You know, they have corporations that run all their telephones, you know, and then one of them is corporations. They just go right through there. Everything runs right through it, just like everybody else. So they already found out, you know, that bin Laden, they let it out that they tracked his satellite phone years ago, remember? And he stopped using his sat phone. So this is not some kind of baloney like Carrie's talking about, to where they can't, you know, where it's hurting, you know, national security. The national security is hurting is a revealing of the unconstitutionality of the surveillance program on the American people by a bunch of scumbag, Luciferian pieces of trash who want to take this country down the martial law road, down a totalitarian road, like a Hitler, like a Stalin, with slight variations thereof, like a Pol Pot, like a, you know, um, <laughs> a red Chinese model, whatever. They're all a variance, but the fact is it's totalitarianism. And then that, with the old fascist refrain of the corporations who then trade all of the information they have on you, they trade it for favorability from the IRS who doesn't go after them, where you have General Electric pays no tax, but you're paying you know, federal, state, local, you're paying 50, 60 percent of your tax money, of your money goes into taxes. But General Electric pays nothing. Maybe it's because they make engines for spacecraft that are not supposed to be there, you know, to the tune of billions a year. Maybe it's the Lockheeds that, you know, make uh, TR-3Bs, you know, TR-4s. Maybe it's somebody else who makes the time machines. Oh, yes, they can go back. You can talk to an engineering firm in Ohio, and you can learn about that. Ladies and gentlemen, this whole thing just makes me, you know, terribly uneasy because I can see and have been seeing where it's going for quite some time, and where it's heading is into a totalitarian nightmare, a Luciferian nightmare, a nightmare where you are going to be under the gun, and just like Luke 21 says, they're going to put their hands on you and deliver you up. Let me read it instead of paraphrasing it. Because we're right here.
and with particularly what the sources I had from last week, which, as you now know, uh, one of the sources was from Doug Hagman and his sources in the DHS, because that was published on stevequail.com on the alert section. But here's the fact of the matter is, And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. They're there, and famines and pestilences and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all of these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony and sell it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate before what ye shall answer. And then you skip down to verse 16. And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can also see as you go on further down. And when ye shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. And I would state this to you. Israel, Mossad, you listening? Mossback buddies, IDF, I'll tell you what, you already know this, but the American people don't necessarily know it. Some people do. Monday night, there were about 50 to 60 transport planes that were seen and flying over out of North Carolina. Um, I think out of the old Guilford Courthouse even might have seen them going above that. But be that as it may, they were flying out of North Carolina, out to sea, and about 50 to 60 of them, and this was noticed by a lot of people, and they started to talk about it, discuss it. Well, you know what they did? Immediately, they put out a fake tabletop drill exercise with completely with manufactured traffic. That's right, manufactured radio traffic. And there's ways of telling that. Because the radio guys don't give it the way they used to because they've had to go back to school, to Radio 101 school up at Andrews, different places, because they just don't know what they're doing anymore. We sent them back to school twice, from what I understand. But the fact of the matter is, is that they just don't have the heart in it, and they don't fake it very well. And you can tell they're bored, and it's an exercise. So there you go, guys. Radio 101, take it back to school again. But here's the deal. Then everybody said, and there were some TV stations in North Carolina, South Carolina, stuff, saying, oh, well, this is just a drill. And there's you, you, many of you have called in about aircraft flying overhead, large number of transport aircraft. This is all part of a drill. Nothing to worry about, nothing to see here, go back to sleep. And, of course, the drill will be over tonight, and blah, 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 blah. Well, the drill wasn't over because those – went off into the Atlantic, and then certain individuals who, uh, you know, are capable of hearing certain things and who uh, watch the Canadian geese and the different geese around the world and the reports, uh, certain uh, very good, you know, state-of-the-art, top-end radio people listening on the HF could hear all these transports talking to Puerto Rico, you know, as they passed by, and some of them were getting refueled, okay? And I guarantee you they went across the pond completely, even though the drill said it was a fake. Now, at that same time, we had the situation where the embassy was attacked, the CIA station, quote, the embassy in Kabul, along with the presidential palace, which they're one and the same, because the CIA has to take the drug money and then hand the kickbacks back to Karzai, his brother also sells a lot of the drugs and to the CIA, but they got to kick back to both brothers. They get them coming and going there. And then at the same time, we're supposed to be making peace with the Taliban who then attacked us. So that means they were trying to up their ante and their cut of the drug money. So they wanted more money. So they knew where the money was at. They go to the CIA business there in uh, Kabul. Well, I thought that they might be going there. That's one possibility. And then the other possibility is, which is coinciding with the same thing, is we have the situation where Egypt is ready to erupt. We've had 400 troops supposedly doing riot duty 
and finishing their training at Hood that would be on the way. Well, I thought about that and I said, well, 50 to 60 transports is way too much. If you had, if you had paratroops in there, if you had about a hundred per C-130, let's say, just, you know, roughly, um, and I took, where I got that from is by somebody, uh, named Greg Evenson who in the old days, uh, was on a C-130, uh, in, uh, you know, special forces and in, uh, you know, ranger boots, you know, airborne type boots. And, uh, consequently the, uh, cram them all in with gear and stuff. You might get a hundred. Well, if you had 50 planes times a hundred people, well, that's 5,000 troops. Isn't it? Well, that's quite a few airborne. What could you do with that? You could jump right down into Damascus with that. You could jump down in Damascus, let's say, or into Aleppo, or you could jump down and take an airport real quick, couldn't you? And then you could take your airport, and then you could bring in rapid response teams and more airplanes into a Damascus airport or an Aleppo airport, couldn't you? And then you could have the Marine 23rd Amphib, who's on the border with Jordan and Syria, drive on in from there, and then you could unleash, you know, holy uh, Hades from above and just take out all of the planes and everything with the exception of the fact that you got a trouble with an S-300 or an S-400 system. And now, of course, you can see when Russia, when Putin and, and, and the Joker Tut met, <laughs> I mean, they had a good long face to Cold War's on, but did they cut the deal on the backside to where Putin would remove the troops, but he would leave the S-300, the S-400 system, plus a small group of people with nuclear weapons that would still allow then Syria to become the flashpoint from Gog Magog war, which then the United States rushes into and a large number of the United States troops get taken out. And meanwhile, let's say Russian subs from the Gulf, because we had a sub down there that we didn't know about for months, it was down there a month or two, Gulf of Mexico didn't know it was there. And who said that? Yes, military said we didn't know it was there. We had the Chinese sub up, you know, 50, 60 miles off the coast there of California, <laughs> you know, who launched a missile. And they launched it to the west, but until they launched it, we didn't know they were even there. Because, you see, they've got it to where they have all of their, you know, sonar and all their stuff, and over the horizon radar has been turned off, and, you know, all these different things. And I understand why there's trouble with what they're doing with some of the new sonars and stuff and then maybe actually designed to do some other things underwater. But the fact is, they're basically in a situation where the back door is open, the front door is open, the top door is open, the bottom hatch is open, the side doors are open, and everything is ready to go. And then now the Chinese, are, uh, as well as the Russians, are in the, are in the Arctic which the ice is being freed up a little bit up there. And there's stuff going on in Alaska right now as hot as a $2 pistol. <laughs> you know, in the 80s. And then you got heat wave on the west, which is weather warfare. It's happening by design. And it's a Luciferian design. This is no longer Yankees versus uh uh, you know, uh, uh, Cardinals in, in a World Series. This is not your team. And, you know, it's, it's not America's team versus their team. It is to a certain degree, but it isn't because the same people at the top control the teams, even though there is competition amongst the teams because they're all quadruple crossing, backstabbing Lucy's or working for quadruple cross, backstabbing Luciferians. And that is the thing that people who don't understand that don't get why certain things happen and why things are not done, you know, for the purposes of, you know, furthering the interests of the United States. And then you have the guys that are small business people, usually locally, who say, well, that doesn't make any sense. There is no profit in this. They own all the banks. They print all the money, and they're, getting you to go, go, go back into stocks, go, 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 keep buying those bonds, 
go, 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 keep it all on paper. And then, oh, 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 sell your gold at the cheap, sell your gold at the cheap, sell your silver and give it to them so they can buy it. And then they're going to flip it all on you and burn your paper house down. Now, oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's just, that's just off the top of my head. I haven't even got to any of my stories or any kind of things here. Let me just tell you something to be aware about. This is uh, very chilling to me. And Steve uh, Quayle at SteveQuayle.com, you can see it in the alert section. Uh, he got a letter from uh, somebody, let's see, uh, in central Illinois, rural central Illinois. It says, Steve, I live in rural central Illinois. A car pulls into the driveway with the Virginia plate. Out walks this very big man with a very thick Russian accent proceeds to tell me he's in the area selling children's books. And he saw my playground in the yard for my kids, and he shows me a book and where he had been in the small towns in that area selling these books and where the parents had given their kid names, their kids' names and ages and everything. They had them in the record and where he sold them the books. And then he says, I can't help but be suspicious the whole time because this guy was very adamant about trying to speak to my wife. I can only assume why. After telling him several times I was not interested and would not give him any info on my family, I practically had to get downright rude to him. After he kept asking what would be a better time to come back, he did finally leave. The thing that got me was that there was nothing special at all about these children's learning books. He did not have a business card or any form of ID this guy clearly was in great shape and was way too big to be a traveling children's book salesman from Virginia. Call me crazy, but why would anyone give a complete stranger that much information without any concern? Now, here's the follow-up. A couple days later, uh, Steve gets this, and you can see it's up on these alert sections as well. Fairbanks, Alaska. Confirmation of men with strong accents selling kids books and asking for families' information. The girl I work with here at Fairbanks told me about a month ago that a salesman came to her door trying to sell her children's learning books for an outrageous price. When I read the story on your website, after I got to work, I asked her if the man that came uh, to door to door had a, had a strong accent. She said, yes, he did. And he did not appear to be the door to door type person, more the military type. He was very adamant about getting info from her and she had to be very blunt and stern with him. This is very alarming to think that they're doing all of this across the nation. Yes, and I'm going to tell you what they're doing. These guys are the ones who are going to take your children after they put two bullets in your head or send you to the concentration camp in the truck. But if you, you know, ask them even two questions about why they're doing it, under national security, blah, 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 under Diane Feinstein and Mayor Bloomberg's rules, then they're going to shoot you dead right on the spot and turn you into soil and greed, and they're going to take your children. And then they're going to traffic those kids, and they're getting the names, ages of the children, because they're going to take them for personal slaves and sell them off into the Orient or somewhere into the brothels, you know, in the East Bloc countries, Bulgaria, or send them to China, or send them to Saudi Arabia. Or just love for your little kids. The Russians are smart. And at the same time, they get to see other things about things in the area. Notice they're going to people who may already be the prepper type or firearm owners. Maybe some people who listen to Steve Quayle or the old hawk. We'll be back in a minute, ladies and gentlemen. But that's extremely disturbing. With natural and man-made disasters and economic turmoil, if we don't get well prepared, we will most certainly regret it. Good readiness must include storage of high-quality food that will build us up rather than tear us down. Much of the storable food available is full of bad fats, salt, sugar, nutrient-poor refined foods, and even MSG. In response, EnerHealth Botanicals has created our 40-day and 40-night 100% organic preparedness pail. It's GMO-free and has a 10- to 20-year shelf life if stored at 60 degrees or less. 
Some of the items need cooking, some can be eaten dry, while some can be soaked and sprouted. These are selling out fast, a third the price of storable food packages. Call us at 866-762-9238. That's 866-762-9238. Or go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. 866-762-9238. Or go to E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Hawk on Survive to Thrive Thursday night, 627, I believe, 2013, the Chinese year of the snake. And don't ever forget that the Lord Jesus gave you dominion or ability to trample upon serpents and scorpions. And there's a lot of them out there. So, yeah, these Russians are moving around in separate places in the United States, and I bet we hear more about that as we get going here. And then they're looking to see what you've got, but they're also going ahead and getting the names, ages of their children, so they can say, oh, hello there, little Johnny and little Susie. Oh, yes, I'm your Uncle Ivan. Here to help you from the government. Your parents were bad people. We had to shoot them. Ha, 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 ha. But now you come with us and we take good care of you. Ha, 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 ha. Maybe they'll sell them to the red Chinese as wives, you see, the girls. And they'll trade the uh, others for, uh, you know, people who are now uh, generals in the military. Uh, the U.S. military might need a little uh, groom or aid or something. Or, you know, you could have somebody like a Reggie Love to be your personal, uh, you know, footman or your uh, valet, you know. Oh, golly, ladies and gentlemen, it's just terrible. Anyway, I would tell you that the first thing uh, that you better get is to have plenty of food. And as well as the 40-day, 40-night payout, you can get the 14-day and night organic food supply. You can get it for 99 bucks, 99.95. And I would get all the herbal tinctures, all the different things, but I'm going to get more into what I think still is going to happen and perhaps the timing. But you can get those, and if you would go to enerfood.com, E-N-E-R-F-O-O-D.com, 866-762-9238. You mention the word hawk, you tell them hawk sent you, and you'll get additional discounts on all your items except for, I think, the uh, – Bert, British Burkeville, they don't give you additional discount. That's over and above quantity discounts. So go ahead and get you all that you can get. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'll tell you, I was talking about the Russians there and moving around. And then meanwhile, uh, just to give another thing from one of the uh, listeners and readers out there, it's, uh, Steve uh, was uh, got this. He says, Steve, he said, I learned years ago that many trained intel personnel from the PRC, the Chinese military, enter the country via containers and work Asian restaurants. I've talked about that since day one, if you recall, ladies and gentlemen, and worked in Asian restaurants while learning our language and studying in our universities. A few days ago, when media source reported that China was busy acquiring gold reserves and planning uh, to attempt the removal of the U.S. dollar as the world's currency, a private house in our neighborhood where many of these restaurant employees live under the radar was suddenly very crowded all day and through the night. The driveway that only occasionally has a vehicle was jammed and anyone else noticing anything like this with similar house across the country. And that's uh, John saying that. Well, I'll tell you what, that's a good question. If anybody has seen activity in the Chinese restaurants or you know where there's, you know, all those guys who look at you are eating when you go in there to eat, and they are at the uh, door, uh, the table near the kitchen, and they all look over at you, and they got high and tight haircuts, and they're all 20 years old or 22 years old and very fit, and they're all cooks. And there's 13 of them. You know, I don't think so. Um, you got to have an idea and understand that that's going on. And so you had Xi, you know, and the uh, Joker Tut Lizard uh, at Palm Springs, you know, laughing it all up, walking around the golf course. Well, basically, uh, he's getting all the, uh, you know, uh, who's on first, who's on second, that kind of stuff, and getting all the rules of the road down for the big Lucy Hootenanny. 
But they're also, it's time for the quadruple cross party, uh, like old brother Steve has always talked about. Now, to wit, as we said last week, I read to you the, uh, uh, the information from the source, and basically here's what it said. And it says, Steve, here's what I just received. Okay, this, I'll just read the, the thing because Steve put this out. DOD, DHS, and NORTCOM coordinated some type of meeting. This was last week with the FEMA, all heads of all agencies. FEMA is calling in all operational personnel and activating them. All agencies must be up to 90% battle street strength in the next five weeks, 70% in the next seven days. Expect some type of domestic event in the next 10 to 14 days. We're still in that time window. And he says, no clue what this means. Did not come from such and such, but a secondary source in D.C. And I had a heck of a time getting that much, Doug. Uh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that is real stuff. And that was a confirmation of something that I'd already said to you last week that I already had information about that FEMA had a meeting. Now, here's some of the other things that are involved that are quite interesting. Other dots, so you say. Wall Street Journal reports today, this is from a Kurt Nimmo article, Infowars.com, CIA plans August offensive in Syria. CIA plans August offensive in Syria. Wall Street Journal reports today, the CIA is moving weapons from secret warehouses to Jordan ahead of an August offensive in Syria. The covert plan was authorized by Obama earlier this month. The newspaper reports an Arab and European nations are also involved in the effort. F. William Ingdahl on the CIA and its mercenaries in Syria. Saudi Arabia, he says, plans to provide man pads, shoulder-fired anti-aircraft missiles, otherwise known as stingers, just like the stingers that we provided to the Mujahideen and to the Bin Laden crowd in Afghanistan. Because we're Arming the same Al-Qaeda, the base, you know, those with on the database of Arabs and Muslims who work for the CIA. Saudi Arabia plans to provide man pads, that's solar-fired anti-aircraft missiles. I just wonder if they take down any American aircraft, you know, or take down any jetliners, you see. And we're going to give them to the Al-Qaeda in Syria, okay, that we're running through the CIA. And they say, oh, we're going to select a number of groomed terrorist mercenaries to give them to. The journal reports that the U.S. will monitor this effort to try to reduce the risk, not eliminate, but reduce the risk that man pads could fall in the hands of Islamists. Well, what is it that we're trying to prevent Al-Qaeda from getting stinger missiles and taking down, you know, stuff like Flight 800? Uh, hello? But meanwhile, the NSA, General Alexander, you piece of crap, you lied to Congress. We ought to cut your budget 75% because you're unconstitutional. <laughs> you're all over us. But in the meantime, CIA is arming Al-Qaeda who you claim this whole bit is all for to prevent Al-Qaeda from attacking America again when you're handing them man pads, and I wonder if they just might take out an aircraft. Wouldn't that be something if these man pads that Saudi Arabia, which are probably stingers, is giving to the terrorists, the Syrian rebels, the Al-Qaeda of Syria, being run by the CIA, the Salafist is another name for them, that they're giving those to them, wouldn't it be something if they got on a private aircraft or took some of these man pads and stepped outside of uh, JFK or outside of Dulles or, you know, Ronald Reagan and used a man pad and launched, uh, you know, one of these uh, man pads.